What's up, you guys? Today's video is a review of the High Women's debut record, which is just self-titled. It's called The High Women. Now, who are The High Women? Well, it is a group made up of four people that are all at least country music adjacent. Brandi Carlisle, who is an Americana folk singing kind of superstar that has really had two major hits, one being The Joke and one being The Story. Uh, we've got Marin Morris, who is obviously a pop country star with songs like uh, My Church and 80s Mercedes and most recently Girl. Natalie Hemby, who is a popular country music songwriter, who is most notable for probably working with Miranda Lambert. And then we've got Amanda Shires, who is a fiddle playing, folk singing, kind of still in the same Americana world that uh, Brandi Carlisle usually plays in. And you may have heard of her husband. It's Jason Isbell uh, to the commenter that taught me. I was saying Isbell all wrong. Um, so they formed this year a group called The High Women, and it is obviously riffing on the term Highwaymen, which was a country supergroup made up of Chris Christopherson and Johnny Cash and Waylon Jennings and Willie Nelson back in the day. Now, given the elevated profiles of everyone in this band, it's not surprising that the High Women have had a ton of ink spilled about them for just a debut record that doesn't really have a hit off of it yet. And it's been interesting to kind of watch all of the coverage happen. In the same way that Casey Musgraves gets a crazy amount of coverage whenever she does anything by people that otherwise don't seem very interested in country music, there's a lot of that happening with the high women. And a lot of people that don't seem to care that much about country about 90% of the time are saying that this is kind of the album of the year. And that can create a lot of resentment for people that sort of live and breathe country music because it's like, well, now I feel like the intelligentsia is telling us what's cool and what's not. I'm definitely sensitive to that sort of what I view as elitism. And yes, that's a projection because that was my background being in media and I quit it for a reason. And then there is definitely a political sort of angle to the high women's existence. You know, obviously there are not many women that are getting played on country radio at the moment. And from the very inception of the high women, it was meant to sort of poke the bear of that uncomfortable issue for everyone in country music. And, you know, Brandi Carlisle said, I want this record to get played on country radio. And given that country radio is a format that that really does demand you kiss the ring to play them. It seems like it's a pretty unlikely prospect, but there's a lot of people that get really jacked up on fighting for this cause, and I understand it. I often get jacked up on fighting for the cause of getting women on country radio, but it's definitely kind of created this sort of cloud of conversation around this album that polarized, like everything in our freaking society polarizes now, where you've got your standard people on the left saying, the high women are amazing. You've got your standard people on the right saying like, I'm not gonna listen to a bunch of like liberals that are telling me what to do. And you know, let's just, sit here in the middle like 90% of the world always does and certainly like I do I can see both sides now let's talk about the music because overall I think this is a really good album I think the high women have created something that feels definitely warm in its tone um, pretty cohesive in that sort of Dave Cobb vintagey sound and we'll get to there later because that's kind of my one issue with the record and I think you get a lot of sort of lightly feminist perspectives, but it's really not kind of a man-hating album. And they said they sought to make an album that was not man-hating. And it really kind of captures just shades of womanhood, I think, on this record. The first song you might have heard from it was Redesigning Women, which is kind of, I guess, the single. And to me, it's like one of the worst songs on here. I really, really hate the unison sound of the singing. And I know they've said in interviews that they wanted to sing in unison to show kind of solidarity, but I don't find it powerful. I find it sounds very very kind of campfire-ish and juvenile compared to how mature much of the rest of the record is. I also don't think that, you know, it clicked to me at some point that redesigning women might be riffing on some show called Designing Women that I don't know anything about. I actually think the opening track on the record, The High Women, or it's just called High Women, which features Yola, who you guys know that I love, is a way cooler intro to this record and it's kind of just imagining um, everything from Freedom Riders to, uh, uh, to, to witches um, and Sandinistas and it's kind of just showing all these different perspectives on kind of strange women throughout history and and I just think it's a cool song and obviously it's riffing on that song Highwaymen which is also very weird and a very weird music video. I think each woman in the group has a real moment that she shines on this record. Each one of them has I mean my probably my four favorite tracks on the whole record are are each kind of led by one of the women and i think that's just kind of generally true i think i prefer a specific perspective way more than i prefer a kind of group perspective and that's probably just like an inherent issue with me and an album like this is 
knowing that oh, you're not going to tour together, knowing that, you know, this is probably kind of a gimmick. It's harder for me to just listen with the intensity of, of just wanting all of this to feel so thoughtful and perfectly curated. And, and that's kind of what I like out of artists. And I guess just there's some level in which a super group, that's never going to be what you have because it is kind of a temporary thing. And I guess I have trouble just investing as much. But when the women are kind of given a chance to individually shine, I feel like the album really, really shines. Maren Morris sings a song called Loose Change that I adore on this record. It is full of good kind of like one, a little bit too punny country songwriting. And I love that stuff where she says, I'm going to be somebody's lucky penny someday. So like you can't just keep me in your pocket like loose change. And it's kind of about her knowing her worth. Um, which is not just loose change, it's about her value. It's just sort of gently and uh, humorously confident, and I think she sounds awesome on it. I really like how Maren Moore sounds on this record. I wish she would sound more kind of in this country, soulful vein a little bit more, because I really like it. Natalie Hemby has a song called My Only Child, which um, is about expressing love for your child, even if it is your only child. It's an interesting perspective, and I haven't heard something like that before. Amanda Shire's song that she wrote herself, it's the only solo right on this record, is called Cocktail and a Song, and it's just lovely. I mean, it's it's a gorgeous song, and if you've never heard Amanda Shire's voice, it kind of captures that um, vibrato-y, almost Dolly Parton-esque, willowy quality to her voice. Um, and I love her, her fiddle playing all through this record. It's uh, melancholy and gorgeous. The big vocal showstopper of a song on this album is Brandy Carlisle's song, which was actually written by Jason Isbell and Amanda Shires and Chris Tompkins. And it is called If She Ever Leaves Me. And this is really kind of the soaring vocal moment of the record in which she is saying that, you know, if this girl were ever to leave her, it's not going to be for this guy over here. And I think that it's... um. It reminds me in some ways of, what was the song on Randy Hauser's record? Uh, not Evangeline, uh, No Good Place to Cry. It's just kind of this torchy, big vocal moment in the middle of the record. There's a few other songs on here that I don't like quite as much. I definitely don't feel like Old Soul really works to me. Just kind of because Maren Morris is singing it, and I can't think of anyone who's less of an old soul, especially because she was singing on My Name Can't Be Mama. Like, I don't know if I like am ready to be a mama, and then I'm just like... It seems, I don't know, it doesn't seem very old soul, but it's not a bad song. It just doesn't hit me very hard. Wheels of Laredo is something that I just heard on the Tanya Tucker record, and maybe I just preferred that version to this one. Um, Crowded Table is a song I actually really like the chorus of, and I really dislike the verses of. I don't like that unison sound at all. It feels like kids bop to me. And overall, my main issue with this record is the production. It just feels kind of... Like, I'm getting, I, I don't always love when Dave Cobb produces groups. I think the production is pretty boring. It doesn't really let the instruments stand out. It feels way too kind of muddled. The mix is sort of hard. And I think when you add that in with the unison singing, you just get the sense that there's a lot of echoing happening. And I just want everything a little bit cleaner. Generally, I just want an album where uh, the sounds I can really appreciate in each instrument and I can really appreciate each song. And I feel like because we're getting a lot of different perspectives, because we're getting a lot of different voices, because we're getting just a lot of a lot, um, he does sort of smooth it into that vintagey thing that he does, but it doesn't just feel rich in the way that I want it to. And on the way that some songs at their best really do. I really found myself wanting to just love the album more than I did, but I also just felt kind of bored. And that's an indefinable thing, but I think it is really more to do with the the sound of it than it is to do with the words. Because the songs in and of themselves are pretty interesting. It's just taken as a whole, it kind of just left me wanting a little bit more. In the moments where it hits, it really, really hits. And for me, that's Loose Change. I've listened to that song like a million times, and I love it, and I recommend it. So overall, I would give this album a 7 out of 10. I like it, don't love it, and I think it's definitely interesting, if nothing else. And um, we'll see kind of where the conversation with it goes or how popular it is. I I'm very intrigued to see if this is something that kind of the mainstream cares about or if this is just, you know, the people that are really on the inside that care about it. We shall see. Let me know your guys' thoughts on the record. Give this video a like and uh, subscribe to the channel if you've never been here before. I appreciate you all and I'm putting out more content, so I hope you're enjoying it. Okay, bye guys.